Hello again! What we're going to do this time is we're going to make an alphabet. So with your alphabet, not only can you make a print like this when it's fully formed, um, you can use the template that I provided to chop, after you've done that, um, chop them up into individual letters. I'd help if I showed you the right way around. Probably not in the right way around. Um, they're going to be backwards anyway, because that's the way the liner works. But you can then use those individual blocks to spell things out. Like that. What you're going to need for today's tutorial is a ruler, um, a scalpel, your lino. It uses a complete sheet of lino from your box, so the template's designed to fit that. Um, and you are going to need, obviously, your um, lino cutting blades, as well as your ink. This tutorial comes with a template, which you can get through the link in the bio. Uh, it's an A4 print if you want to do it to scale with a piece of your lino, uh, and it has a grid and an alphabet on it. What Mark's done is he's put it down and put a sheet of trace over the top and he's marked in the corners where that grid ends with washi tape. You can see in the top and the bottom. After he's um, done a complete trace of the letters, he's just gonna remove that and he's gonna prep his lino. So one of the things that Mark learned at uni was that if you sand your lino, it, it, it makes it slightly less slippy if you're trying to grip onto it, which inevitably leads to less injuries because I've seen in the comments, some of you guys are like, ah, yeah, I have a war wound from that time when. Right, what he's doing now is, you can see in the bottom, he's got the washi tape aligned with um, the lino, which is how it's meant to be. And he's gonna use, he's fixed it down with more washi tape and he's gonna use a spoon just to press out that traced alphabet on top. And when you um, remove the trace, it will have transposed that on top of the lino, as you can see here. When you are selecting your tool, you want to make sure that you pick something that's, you know, the right size for the job. This can cope with quite a medium sized tool. And if you use that metal handle there, it, un it loosens and you can pop your blade in, slide it back, and then you can tighten it again and it's ready to go. When you're cutting, what you want to do is avoid um, aiming it towards yourself for you know, the reason I mentioned before, which is you don't want to injure, injure yourself. You can imagine if it's cutting through line like this easily, it'll quite happily cut into you. So the aim of the game initially is to make sure that the outline of your letters is completely um, sorted and is neat or as neat as you want to be. I mean, you don't have to be very neat at all. It's entirely up to you. So you can do lovely, great big swooping motions with the lino cutters um, if you are angling it right and you're not pushing down and applying too much pressure into the lino. If you're almost running it parallel with um, the bottom of the board, it works really well because it just glides like you just saw with the, the, uh, the round edges of that B. When you have the outline of your letter done, what you want to do is you want to carve out the rest of the space because the thing with lino, you've got to remember, is that the, the area which you're leaving is going to be the colour. Everything else, everything you want to be white has to go. And here we've carved out all of the letters. It took a little while, um, as you can imagine. We didn't think it was worth showing you all of that. What we're doing now is we're applying ink to the sheet of acetate, which we're going to roll out to be a nice, um, not thin, but thinner texture than just a great big daub, um, making sure that the roller of the brayer is, is evenly coated. Then we just roll that across our template and you'll see that it will pick up some areas which uh, have been left with the, the lino cutting itself. But that's quite nice. We quite like that. It's one of the, the charming things about lino. When you're done with that, you can pop it on um, your sheet of paper or whatever it is you're printing onto, and just make sure you apply a, you know, an even pressure on each bit because you, you can get really mixed results with um, not applying, uh, I'm gonna say the appropriate amount of pressure, it's up to you, it depends what you might be going for, but you can see here that it's a really nice rich black and you have picked up some of the detail uh, from the bits which aren't 100% cut out. So that's one way of doing it. You can get an art print, which is just a full A to Z. 
The other thing you can do is use the grid on your template to make individual letters. So what Mark's doing here is he's set up another um, sheet of trace and he's gonna go over the grid and we are going to have something to transpose onto the back of the lino sheet. You're going to flip that over, it goes on a nice flat back um, and you're going to line this up with the edges and put, we put a bit of washi tape down which to help secure it to make sure it's not jiggling around while you're rubbing it on. And you're going to use a spoon again or whatever it is you choose to use. Um, you can do it with your finger, you can do it with a pencil, you can do it with anything really that applies the right amount of even pressure. Big reveal again so with the right amount of pressure you get a grid transpose on the back it's a little bit fainter this time but that doesn't matter so much now you're going to take your ruler and your scalpel and you're going to chop basically just follow the grid just chop it out uh, in order to get your individual letters and the grid is designed the letters are placed in the grid in a way which will uh, when you place them next to each other they're, they're equally spaced um, horizontally so you can you can spell something out. Admittedly, if you want to spell something really complicated, you might need to do this twice because you're not going to have um, the right amount of letters, but you can spell basic things with this. So today we are going to spell artful, as I've already shown you with the, um, the result beforehand. Ink it up again, because it's got a bit dry. And this is a bit more finicky because there's, there's obviously a lot less area and because you, uh, with tacky ink, it wants to kind of pull your individual blocks up when you're rolling over it. So you just have to be careful. Just do them nice and gently. As I mentioned with the equal spacing of letters, if you put them, um, if you cut them out neatly with a scalpel, um, you should be able to place them next to each other and they will be equally placed. So we're going to pop a piece of paper on top this time. And applying pressure with this version is a little bit more difficult because you've got to make sure that you're not pushing too far over because if you bend it like an arc, you're going to pick up lots of muck from um, the bits of the liner which aren't cut out. And you can see on the U and the L that the pressure wasn't really applied that well, but you can, you can take that into account. Well, I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you're going to make yourself some art prints. Um, you can spell something out, you can make a nameplate for your door, you can print this onto wood, you can do all sorts of stuff. Please let us know what you think of these videos because I'm trying to make them um, as useful as possible. If you benefit from anything else, just let me know and I'll try and make sure that I do it next time. And if you haven't subscribed to art for on YouTube yet, please do because the videos from previous month's boxes will start to cycle on there so it's well worth doing. And I'll see you in a month's time. Thanks guys!